I know, I know, I stink. But it was close. We lost to nuns. I have never been so humiliated. In front of everyone, you told Sister Mary Alice, bless this, honey. Hey, I might not know all the religious gestures, but I recognize the one she gave to me. Let's rock. Thanks, Dad. Can I get a open? Whoa! No Man Presents, live from the nudie bar, the Married with Children podcast. And here are your hosts. Jerry, Justin, and Al. Hey, what's up, guys? It's the Married with Children podcast. We're back. It's Wednesday. We're live. I'm Al, and I'm here with the guy who, well, this month, he's in his prime. Jerry, what's up, man? I'm feeling good. I'm ready to get out there, get things done. And we're also joined by the guy who has Peggy tattooed on his arm. What's up, Justin? Well, uh, I know it was a bad idea, but it just so happens that um, pretty much every girl that I plan to go for will be named Peggy as well. So it, it, it'll work out. Wait, it'll work itself wait. out. Wait, was Candy's real name Peggy? Yeah, that was her stage name. <laughs> I did yeah. not know that. Oh, yeah. She's a stripper, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, this is How Do You Spell Revenge? Al, Peggy, and Bud are part of a shopping mall softball team... After losing a few too many games, Al demands that Peggy improve her softball skills or she is off the team. Meanwhile, Kelly's new boyfriend, Brian, asks her to prove her love to him by getting a tattoo. Wow. Hold up a second. So Sapphire's real name isn't Sapphire? No. Nope. Do you think the phone number she gave me was real? (laughs) Uh, I don't know. Call it. Maybe a cab will come pick you up. That's what happened to me, remember? A girl gave me her phone number and it was to a cab company. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, so guys, softball, the Bundys play I never heard of a family softball team where like older women, you little boys could play, forty year old dads could play, but it's a, supposedly a, something going on in the mall. Like they just got this whole thing going. You know, ask your families if they want to play, if you work for a store, whatever. Sounds fun. Um, you guys ever play softball? Like you ever? In- um, I played uh, little league as a kid. Never played softball except for in high school. I it I came to realize that I really don't like baseball or softball. It's just it, I, I I'm usually good at everything that I try in terms of like either a game or like. Uh, you know, any activity that I pick up, I usually adapt well to it. For some reason, like, I just couldn't get behind softball or baseball. So that's, that's like, probably the one thing if he was like, hey, you want to join my local softball team? I'd be like, hell no. If it was, like, bowling or, football, like, flag football or anything else, I would do it. But baseball, yeah. just not my thing. I'll, uh, I'll give you one guess on me. Hmm, let's <laughs> contemplate this one. Yeah, you know, softball seems like the greatest time. It really does. Whenever I think about it, I think about the nice summer night games. I think about yeah. drinking and playing and stuff and, you know, just hanging with the guys, having a good time, doing great stuff, hitting some home runs or whatever. It sounds like a really great time, but, man, I just can't commit to it. Like, I feel like, well, I don't want to be asked to go do something. <laughs> so, wait, you're going to schedule my nights and I gotta do this or blah blah blah. and i am really selfish with my time that way so yeah i can't even consider uh joining anything like that i can't believe i did bowling once a week honestly yeah that's why you podcast now yeah yeah because that's not taking up my time yeah it's not yeah it's it's (laughs) it takes no time to make sure we watch the show uh do this review and then spend four hours uh producing every show that's definitely no problem just remember, Alex, if you, it's only a game if you win. If you lose, it's a waste of your time. <laughs> it's a stinking waste <laughs> of time. Exactly. So 
if we win, if this podcast, Marriage Sugar Podcast, blows up and by a third, fourth season, if enough of our shows are floating around cyberspace and people type that in and they find us and we become huge, then this is not a stinking waste of time. Yeah. And you don't know until you get there. Yep. If you build it, they will come, guys. Did you play baseball as a kid? And I hate baseball uh, with a passion. Like, that is the most boring waste of time and it angers me to know that baseball players get paid like a hundred times more than football players because dude it's the only sport i can't get into like i love hockey go pens i love nfl uh i can watch nba and mixed martial arts is like one of my favorites i cannot watch a baseball game this is literally how i feel about every single sports (laughs) jerry we're gonna get you into football yeah, how could you not love football? No, I've got I've got two football jerseys. Oh, we heard about this. Remember his dad gave him jerseys of people who killed people or something? <laughs> no, only the Baltimore Ravens won. <laughs> nice game, pig. Oh, you're talking to me again, huh? It was fun, Al. It's only a game. No, it's only a game if you win. But if you lose, it's a stinking waste of time. <laughs> Especially if you lose to the Kiss Me Cosmetics Company. Well, they sure smelled good, didn't they? And you know, Al, I may have struck out four times, but at least I found out I was using the wrong eyeliner. Peg, we lost to six women and three men with visible panty lines. Okay, first of all, like... That joke made me pause, rewind, and listen to it again because I was like... He did not just say what I think he just said. Oh, yeah. And he did. And I was like, I don't even know how to take this joke. I'm just going to accept this joke. There are so, so many questions. The Bundys play for the New Market Maulers. Yeah, but they but they spell new. The, the, when they, his jersey, do you notice that the N on his shirt is backwards? No, I did not notice that. Really? I noticed what Bud was wearing last episode, but I didn't notice that. Oh. You didn't notice that the gigantic uh, words across his chest were were uh, a falsity? No, I'm going to be honest with you. I was looking at Peg a lot because I thought Peg was looking pretty smoking in this baseball outfit. Oh, uh, yeah? I think she might look a little bit hotter in that baseball outfit than she did in uh, Florida. That's all I'm saying. Uh, uh, I, don't, I wouldn't say that. Uh, would you go upstairs with a banana like Bud did with her? Oh, yes. <laughs> it does need batteries. <laughs> Bud, you had fun, didn't you? You stink, Mom. (laughs) We lost to women, Dad. You'll get used to it, son. We haven't won a game all season. Well, I'm going to go upstairs and take a shower. Al, would you like me to prepare your shower? You know, spray deodorant on the underarms of a clean shirt. Peg, I don't have any clean shirts. (laughs) Well... You guys can be miserable if you want to, but I got out in the sunshine and I had a good time. I love being on this team. Ah, Peg, you're right. That's what it's all about. We gotta get rid of your mother, bud. I know, Dad, but how? We've gotta have three women on the team. Well, we gotta do something. We're all in seven. If we lose our next two games, we're out of the league. Just too risky, bud. We need another woman. Well, this may be stretching the word woman, but Kelly's pretty good. She's got a great arm. I once saw her hit a police car with the rock at 200 yards. I taught her how to throw. Let's sign her. I don't know. Mom loves those games. How are we going to get her not to play? Well, that's where you come in, bud. I leave it up to you. Nothing permanent. I just want her out for two weeks. You can depend on me. Hey, I... I I don't want to know about it. Just do what you have to do. Right, Dad. <laughs> How yeah, crazy is that? Thinking that you're going to let the, the mentality of a, a 13-year-old who clearly his only go-to is to hurt the mom. <laughs> like, and Al's like, it's okay. Just, just go. Don't tell me. Here's the other thing. Bud is the one that recommends Kelly... It even backs her up by saying she can hit a cop car at 200 feet with a rock. He's seen it. Actually, it was 200 yards. Oh, I'm sorry, 200 yards. Okay, so does this mean he 
wants his dad's approval more than he hates Kelly? 200 yards is far. I just thought of that. It is. Can we put that in context? How A football field is... 100 yards. 100? Wait a minute. <laughs> that is... What a crock. There's this no has got to... This is like the, the bowling thing. They had their numbers all wrong. Someone did not proofread this. No. <laughs> Somebody did not go, well, guys, how far is that exactly? Are you sure they didn't say feet? No, they said yards. I, I wrote down feet, but that's only because I just, I guess I just auto assumed feet and I didn't rewind that part because a lot of times when I'm quoting something, I rewind it and play it back and write it. And I didn't do it for that part. So yeah. the one well, time I don't do it. Guys, I'll play it right now and you can see that I am right as always. Here we go. She's got a great arm. I once saw I hit a police car with the rocket 200 yards. <laughs> <laughs> Un- unlike the time I was completely wrong about what car Steve drove. Oh, yeah. Wow. You are. Listen, you cannot go up against the master, man. Come on. I, I put tw- about 27 years into the show, which How's is you- older than me. Yeah. I get it. You were watching the show when Hitler was walking the earth. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, was, I was watching the show during the prohibition, man. Don't mess with me. He was going down to the speakeasy to get a little whiskey and a, a little look at Kelly. <laughs> You know that key that Benjamin Franklin had on the kite when he was flying it? That was the key to my apartment when I walked in and yeah. watched it. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, Bud's getting Peg off the team. Any means necessary. Let's say this was a cute little moment between Al and his daughter when she comes in. He goes, hey, think fast. And he throws the fruit to her. And yeah. the looks they gave each other. Oh, and by the way, um, when Kelly walks in the door, our Married with Children research team uh, let us in on the fact that there's a, you can see a the shadow of a boom mic to the right of her as soon as she enters the house. Uh, I posted a picture of it on our Facebook group page. But uh, didn't that just – didn't you see years of playing catch in the backyard in a blink of an eye and a flash in your head at that moment? Yeah, and I, lo- I love stuff like that, man. Yeah. It, it, it warmed my heart, and it goes back to season one when we talked about how lived in this show feels. Mm-hmm. All except for Bobo being a part of Kelly's uh, birthday parties. <laughs> I thought we agreed to never talk about that again. You're right. <laughs> That's the only thing that didn't work. Uh. So Kelly can't fill in for Peg this week because she just started dating a new guy, Brian. And they're going to uh, watch them unload 1988 Harleys down at the bike shop this weekend. How was Kelly's like reason she she was she said uh he's never thrown a teacher through the window. That, <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, she says he's listen, he's never thrown a teacher through a window. He's never robbed a car or something, but I still love him anyway. Yeah, I was just like, "Okay, so you're dating some a, a goody two shoes this time?" I like how she yeah. she still loves him anyway. Like, I know you didn't do any of that stuff, but I love I love you anyway. Like most people. I was going to say I bet the horn on his car sounds fantastic boom, 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 boom. <laughs> justin have you ever thrown a teacher out of a window no no never <laughs> can't say that i have so you didn't get chicks like kelly then i wouldn't say that oh you did okay i was gonna say maybe that's our problem maybe we should start doing that kind of stuff to get kelly yeah 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 whenever whenever it's age appropriate okay so in 2019 let's start doing this stuff guys come on all right all right finally we'll get our act together yeah, what was the one joke where I said uh, Jerry's in his prime this month? Where did that line come from? I literally don't know. This was the first time that you've thrown the joke out, and I did not get it. So, what's his name? Brian. Oh, Mom, I love everything about him. His hair, his lips, his breath. His breath? Really? Well... <laughs> the old myth of a girl wanting a guy just like her father. Peg, I wonder why you never went after a guy like your father. Or weren't there any chronically unemployed social parasites <laughs> the month you were in your prime? Yeah, yeah that, that it was weird because I didn't I didn't get Jerry's joke, which I was like, hmm, that's usually not I, the case. I didn't have a joke because I 
just did not know what he was talking about, and I was just like, <laughs> I went super obscure this time because J- Justin always says I give you the easy ones and I make his really difficult. Uh, so I gave you a very obscure line in that uh, this is the month that you're in your prime. That is very obscure. There's probably no way that you would remember that. So I'm going to give you a pass. Good. The father-daughter talk. We got to talk about this. Uh, <laughs> he go- she goes, we've never had a father-daughter talk. And he goes, I've never had anything to say to you. <laughs> never and once. And then he, when, he, when she brings up Bud, he goes, Bud needs, means nothing to me. <laughs> and all I can think about is life means nothing to me. <laughs> Justin, did you have a lot of father-son fa- talks with your dad, or is it pretty much just like the Bundys? I've had one father-son talk with my dad. <laughs> so maybe Al's not that bad. But uh, my grandfather was more the father-son talks. Not, I never really had like those like – tv show type talks that much did you no no never me either but it, my dad just doesn't talk to me so <laughs> <laughs> he, he believed in learning by doing go out and fail a couple of times you'll figure it out and the last thing from from that that was really funny your dad might not be around forever that's what mom said <laughs> <laughs> yeah she's the reason i might not be around yeah so kelly's dating a guy who who gives her everything on the menu at a nice restaurant and then puts a roach in the food and they get everything for free. Uh, Have you ever tried that trick, guys? No. I've never even dined and dashed. I've never even done that. I feel like that's the that's the low ball way of doing anything. Like I, I don't have respect for those guys. <laughs> yeah, hey man, stop putting a back door out by the bathroom. <laughs> you know? Um so like I said, Kelly feeds everyone grapes, and Brian has seen her do this. That that line was really funny. <laughs> you don't love me. Yes, I do. Do you think that I would do this for everyone? I've seen you do this for everyone. <laughs> like, why would you say that to Kelly? Like, let's just say she has done it, and she, you have a hot chick. Let's face it, Brian's not the best-looking guy. Mm-hmm. He looks a little like, uh, he looked... He has, like, these weird skeletal features in his face that make him creepy. And his skin is really odd-looking and pale and bleak. And his hair is just, I don't know, like, he's just an odd-looking kid. I i suppose he looks like he might be cool in those days, but I think Kelly could do better. But He, he looked like he should have been on that 70s show. <laughs> He looks like he should be saying it rubs the lotion on the skin, if you want to know the truth. He's getting Kelly, and it's like, why would you say something insulting to her? Like, if she's feeding you grapes, you're already, like, halfway there, dude. Just shut up. You stink! My parents are home. I thought they'd be playing softball all day. I thought I'd leave home by the time I was 15. You know, sometimes things don't work out the way you think. But look, don't worry about meeting my parents. Except for my father. I mean, he's okay and all, but... If he finds you sitting in a spot, he'll punch you in the face. Where is his spot? I forget. <laughs> Anyhow, only talk to him about sports and bodily functions. It's what he knows, it's what he likes. Oh, one more thing. If you touch me while he's here, he'll break your back. Ready? It was very brave of you to play with that foot, Al. <laughs> Yeah, freak accident, slipping on a banana peel. How'd you do, Dad? I went four for four. Bud went four for four, and your mom... Well, we lost 17 to eight. At least I hit the ball, Al. Oh, great. You finally make a bunt, and an 80-year-old man beats you to first base. Of course, he wasn't wearing high heels. Bud, you want to get me some juice, huh? Is this your spot? This is my house. Every spot is my spot. Mom, Dad, I'd like you to meet Brian. Next week, we play the Christian T-shirt shop. Now, they've never won a game because they refuse to steal, but they've never played us. Dad, the refrigerator's been sucked dry. Who's this? It's Brian. Nice to meet you, Brian. You're nice to meet you, Brian. Hi. Your breath smells of juice. Uh, 
Man, I just love every time they bring up juice. It's like... It is weird that he has an obsession with juice. <laughs> I really like, want to know I, what I like kind. juice a little bit, but it's just like... Huh. <laughs> what kind of juice are we talking about here? Too? That's what I want to know. I feel like it's some kind of like grape juice, maybe. Like it, It's definitely a purple juice. I feel grape juice as well. It's weird that you said that. Really? For some reason, when someone says juice... I automatically go to a purple juice. I feel like it's apple juice, honestly. I don't think it's orange juice. No. Yeah, because if it was orange juice, he would say OJ. Right. Like, you just don't call orange juice orange juice. You no, know, you just don't call it juice. You call it orange juice. Right. <laughs> Can you get me juice? Like, it's such an odd... Like, why <laughs> couldn't they have just switched this whole thing around from day one and just called it beer? <laughs> like, <laughs> why are we even talking about this? Or, like, even something cool like soda. Maybe because no, no, it's no. we don't we don't say soda. Because he's the only one that drinks it in the house and that's been said and if you said soda, well everyone drinks soda. And with the beer, Not you me. can't have him drinking well, I meant in that house. You can't have him drinking beer all the time because then it kind of it just makes him look like a alcoholic. So I'm pretty sure to... they don't say soda in Chicago either, I'm just saying. Well they say pop? Yep. Pop? That's what it's called. That's weird. It's it's called soda, but I mean, if you want to call it pop, I mean, if you want to put a pop in your mouth, I'm not I'm not going to judge what you do with old men. So you you guys, you guys say I'd like a burger, a side of fries, and a medium pop. Well, I would say medium Coke if I was getting Coke or I'd name it by the name, but like, yo, go to the fridge and grab me a pop. Like that's what really? we say. Yeah. And you say that because the bubbles pop, I guess. No, well, why do you call it soda? Because that's the first half of soda pop, and you don't want to say the whole thing because you're lazy and you got shit to do. <laughs> yeah, but soda sounds stupid. It sounds it sounds like soap or something. Uh, maybe it's because I've heard it my entire life. I just don't feel that way. Alex, uh-huh. you say soda, right? Yeah. Brian, I'd like to meet my brother, Bug. That's Bug. <laughs> I was named after a beer, wasn't I, Dad? <laughs> so, Brian, outside of drinking all our juice, what are your intentions with uh, Kelly here? <clears throat> and we find out, oh, which, speaking of all this drinking, we find out that uh, during this interaction with Brian that Bud was named after a beer. I always wondered, what beer could it be? Uh, Miller Lite, I think? Yeah. Uh, Nighty Light? Cold 45? And two zigzags? Do you guys call beer something besides beer? Uh, nope. Trash? Beer. Beer? What do you mean trash? I, I don't drink I don't drink beer. I've never tasted a beer that tasted good. They all taste horrible, and I don't listen, know why people listen, drink listen. them. I'm with you on that when I'm a kid, right? Like, the first time I tried beer, I was like, ew. I swear to God, like, you get, like, once you realize what the taste is and, like, get acclimated to it, like, you and, like, you actually look forward to that taste. Oh my god, I just realized something. When you're a kid and they ask you if you want to be a Toys R Us kid forever, they actually meant it. You never grew up? That's a binding contract. I got into beer when I realized what it does to you. But there's better ways to, to do that to you. Like, give me it. Like, okay. Yeah, what are you, you going to tell me? Heroin is better for your liver? No, because Reese makes fun of me all the time for this. I really like Mike's Hard Lemonade. Especially Mike's Hard Black Cherry Lemonade. It, it, it is fantastic. And even though Reese gives me shit about it, it has more alcohol content than her Coronas. So. Okay. I'm going to make you feel better about something. Wow, really? That's how I transitioned into beer. I, I feel like beer just, like, liquor is, like, not good for pacing. Like, with beer, you can drink a lot of beers over, uh, you know, couple hours hour period, and yeah. yeah, and and you're okay. But like, like you can constantly, you can drink the entire time, right? But like, you can't drink a glass of liquor the entire time. <laughs> well, it's a mixed drink. I mean, but even I then, can. like, well, I do Jack and Coke, and I could do that for about four or five hours. You mean Jack and Cola? Jack and Pop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, Jack and Pop. That sounds perverted. All right. Uh, so, so now, uh, they have this bizarre confrontation with Al and Brian, and, uh, it is amazing, uh, 
Hey, did you uh, did you uh, Jack pop off when he he beat Peggy to first base? <laughs> <laughs> and uh... <laughs> oh, okay, I'll shut up. Go ahead. Uh, yeah. You know, I think my dad really liked you. <laughs> Gee, I really liked him. <laughs> and by the way. Thanks for saying, have some more juice. We have plenty. You're more important than my father. Am I? Sure. You know how I feel about you. You know, it takes more than words. There is a way you could prove it to me, but uh, you'd never do it. Yes, I would. What? <laughs> You've known me for two days. You know, there's nothing I wouldn't do. I know. But I'm talking about a tattoo. One with my name on it. I'm getting one with your name on it. You are? Yeah. You see, that's the way I feel about you, Kelly. Well, where do you want me to put it? <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> as long as it shows. So, like, anywhere. So, <laughs> apparently, <laughs> Kelly is planning on dressing very scantily clad. <laughs> I don't know. My parents would kill me. I'll do it. <laughs> and right there, you just audibly heard Kelly's first kiss on the show. And I believe that's the only time you see her kissing a boy on the entire show until she kisses like Matt LeBlanc or whatever. Again, thanks to our research team, they let us in on that. So Kelly doesn't kiss people on screen too often. Uh, she's only willing to get tattoos of Now, I, I would assume all three of us are a no-go on ever tattooing our significant other's name on our body. Absolutely. I think you can tattoo your parents' names and your children's names, and that's it. Maybe yep. you can, I guess, grandparents. You can do grandparents also. Well, that's weird. But at no point should you or, tattoo... Or a fallen brother. Right. Okay, yeah, I, I would normally say don't do a sibling, but if the sibling's dead, then okay. But tattooing a relationship name is a death sentence. It's like, Reese and I have matching tattoos, but we specifically made sure that if we broke up, it would not matter to anyone, even to us, about these tattoos anymore because it's something we're just we just both happen to be into. Wow, she has retro gamer on her arm too? No, we it, both had the Mystery Science Theater 3000 tattoo in the same, like, location. Hmm. Well, that's, that's that's normal. Everybody watching you and laughing. That makes sense. Yeah. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be your friend if you to come to me and be like, yo, I'm thinking about getting Jess's name tattooed on my back. Or something, I'll be like, dog, get away from me, homie. <laughs> well, Justin, you got to understand, we just made a, a joint Facebook account. This is obviously the next step. <laughs> What about you, Alex? Uh, I'm weird, man. I I can't commit to a tattoo. Like, I, here's the thing, too. Here's another reason I'm not doing it. I'm into so many things that if I were to get tattoos, I would absolutely at this point already have some kind of marrow children tattoo on me. Mm -hmm. That's how messed up I am because I'm into so much and I'm so passionate about all of it that. If I were to get what, like I, I'd definitely say, well, I'm, I'm going to have a sleeve or whatever. So I'd, I'd have so many things yeah. and it would just never end. It would be like, well, I have to get this. Well, I got to represent this, but I love this too. But I got to, you know, and some of it would just. It would... Uh, I'm, I'm kind of the same way as you where I would love to have tattoos of the things that I like, mm -hmm. but I'm very picky and nervous about doing it because I'm like, I'm always like, well, what if I, I need it to be perfect? Right, that too. It just prolongs. Like three years ago, I was gonna start a sleeve of right. like a horror sleeve. I just never. I have one tattoo. I got it when I was thirteen, <laughs> and I haven't had a tattoo since. <laughs> right. So, um, I've been waiting and waiting, but I don't know if it'll ever happen at this point because I'm just like, I, I can't find the perfect ideas and and the. But I want I want to put things that I like. Because right. on one hand, I was like, well, what if I grow out of it? And I'm like, I'm like literally have been into, you know, the stuff that I'm into it's like 25 years. Or yeah, something. it's like it's getting to the point where it's like I, if I grow out of it, I'm probably dead. <laughs> I think I think like at a certain even if you do grow out of it, you can look back and go that represents a certain time in my life. 
<laughs> but don't listen to me because I just enjoy making bad decisions. <laughs> I've got I've got four tattoos and one I need to I want redone because it was my second tattoo and it was done in this dude's like apartment living room. Mm-hmm. And it was just it, I like the tattoo, but it needs to be done properly. And then like my first tattoo, I want to completely cover up. I just haven't figured out a way to do it. What is that? I have a big ass black hatchet man on my forearm. <laughs> okay, classic. Yeah, I got it. Can you, can you post a picture of this on our Facebook group page? No. Uh, <laughs> yes. When you're, when you're yes. young, you do drugs. You make bad decisions. Wow. And and while I I do like the music, or I used to, I like some of it now. But that like I wish I would have just got it somewhere where it wasn't seen every day. Because I <laughs> I hate the fan base. Listen, I didn't even really like. I'm gonna tell you a little story, did. Jerry. When I was in middle school, I got really into uh, uh, the bands ICP and Twisted. All right, yeah. And I was like, man, everybody got Hatchet Man's. Like that's that's what everybody does. So I was like, should I get a Hatchet Man? And I was like, well, are you dumb as fuck? And I was like, no, I'm not. So I didn't do it. See, but I did that same thing, except when I asked the question, I was on drugs and I said, yes, <laughs> that's the, the problem here. So, and I still like Twisted. ICP, I have not liked anything they've done in over a decade, maybe more. Yes. And and it's big and black. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Make a big black monolith on it and put 2001 Kubrick on it? Like, there's literally nothing I can do. Which is essentially see. what uh, Kelly's tattoo could have meant to her, being just a huge regret, like Jerry. <laughs> so, so that's why, as an audience watching this episode, you're like, do not get, what is his name? Brian, Brian. or something? Brian. Don't get Brian's name tattooed on your hip. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Ke- Kelly asks Al for advice, and although Al knows seemingly nothing about what she's even asking or where she's going with this. I mean, all he really got is where she's going with this. And he gave amazing advice for somebody who really doesn't even know what he's talking about. So it almost makes you think that Al Bundy is a genius on some level and he doesn't even know it. Kelly, let me tell you something. Society somehow, some way separated the sexes. Now, they made girls weak. (laughs) Now, I'm not saying it's bad to be a girl. I'd rather be dead myself. (laughs) But it's uh, always the girl's place to do something for the guy. Never the guy's place to do anything for the girl. Until you marry him, then the law steps in and makes you. (laughs) But back to this friend of yours, Betty. See, she has to understand that you don't always have to do what the guy says. Especially if Betty... Is my little girl. <laughs> Especially I think if my little girl. Especially if she's my little girl. <laughs> I like those moments. Like, I, I almost want a bigger uh, father-daughter dynamic between those two. Like, I, I like that we're getting those a little bit here and there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. It's a good mix-up. and it's. Uh... Yeah. I really do think that one thing Al is good at doing is giving advice. Like, normally it's man advice. It's not, like, anything crazy. Like, because this even starts off with uh, them going, uh, it's not about sex, is it? Because I don't know nothing about that. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I, I know. know. Mom told me. <laughs> yeah. But then, like, when he goes into it and he's like, girls do things for the guys, but guys don't do things from the girls. So don't do it if you don't want to. Like, it was actually what Justin said. It was really nice and really special. For somebody who has such great advice, his life really sucks. <laughs> you know, it gets weird. Yeah. It's one of those things where it's like, do what I say, not, not as I do. do. That <laughs> thing. <laughs> so clearly the advice really uh, hit home for Kelly. It really impacted her greatly. Because as soon as Al walks upstairs, she calls Melvin's tattoo parlor <laughs> and makes an appointment for next Sunday. Uh, uh, so... That's Sunday while they play baseball, so the Bundys come home after losing to nuns. They get a surprise visitor at their house. The doorbell rings, and Craig, I mean Ted, I mean uh, Rodrigo, uh, 
No, it's uh, Jimmy. Jimmy, Jimmy, yeah. Jimmy from the aquarium <laughs> shows up. Yes? Hi, Peggy. You don't remember me, do you? No. All right, I'll give you a little hint. That night behind the aquarium in high school? Oh, Craig! No. <laughs> Ted! No. Rodrigo! No. Well, you're just going to have to be a little more specific. Jimmy? Oh, that aquarium! Well, come on in. Al, uh, this is Jimmy from the aquarium. This is my husband, Al. You're a lucky man, Al. Yeah, right. Peg is so brazen to even start this off with, Hi, uh, uh, honey, this is Jimmy from the aquarium. <laughs> like, doesn't that... Is that not the most inappropriate way to introduce this guy after what he just told you? <laughs> to your husband? I think it's hilarious that she didn't go, This is Jimmy from high school. This yeah. is Jimmy from the aquarium. <laughs> yeah. I know where I, I know where Kelly gets it from. Yeah. There was like a, the whole sequence was weird to me. It's like, this guy's a weirdo, man. Yeah. I do, hey, Peg, I do let this one get away. <laughs> and I was just playing it cool. Like, you don't even give a damn. Yeah. He doesn't feel you threatened are. at all. You know what I mean? Like, some guys will react like, like if you brought an ex-boyfriend into the house or whatever, an ex-fling, like, some guys will get real threatened. But Al just doesn't even care. <laughs> How weird is it of Jimmy? I mean, if this if the premise didn't all play out like it did and you didn't get that big plot twist, it would just be so oddly random. Like, oh, Al, a guy I hooked up with behind an aquarium so, who meant so little to me that I don't even know who he is out of four or five other guys. Uh, <laughs> he came to my house 30 years later? Like, what the hell are we... Like, that is bizarre, man. I'd be like, why are you here, dude? I'm married and you're in my home. Like, I don't even know you, dude. Like, it's just so, like, Ke Peg was far too nice to this guy. He he just, every line he delivers is just, um. it's probably the, one of my favorite sequences of Married with Children. Like, this guy, that is the kind of stuff I live for. <laughs> so sit down, Jimmy. You want a beer? Sure. <laughs> so, uh, what brings you around here after all this time? Well, I always wondered what became of you, so I looked you up. Whoever thought that you'd be living in a nice big place like this? Well, I've never even been in a house like this. How'd you let this one get away, Peg? <laughs> Actually, Al, uh, she dumped me. Yeah? What'd you do? Uh, nothing, really. Uh, it was just before the sophomore dance. I rented a tux, a car, bought flowers. I got to her house just in time to see her cute little bottom pull off on the back of a Harley. <laughs> Let me get this straight. You think this house is big, but her bottom Ow. is... <laughs> Jimmy is speaking. And I didn't dump you. I, I just went out the back door with a cuter guy. You know how kids are. Yeah, yeah, I... I can laugh about it now. <laughs> she didn't realize it then, but she was the love of my life. <laughs> See how lucky you are, Al. See how lucky you are? Would you guys ever go to your ex-girlfriend's house and, like, tw 20 years later see how they're doing? No, but now you just look at Facebook, so it's a little different. Like, yeah, you don't have... Dude, I've done it. Like, I definitely had to see <laughs> if the girls I dated are still hot or not, or who they ended up with. I've done that. Or if they have... <laughs> or if they're doing better than you. Yeah. So I guess I am as creepy as Jimmy. Jesus. That's all right. When they're doing better than me, I just go, you swallowed. <laughs> Jesus. It makes me feel better. <laughs> You know, that night I was coming to take you to the dance, I had something special to show you. Look at this. Oh, Jimmy, I'm so flattered. 
Well, look at that, Al. He has my name tattooed on his arm. You never did that. Well, maybe that's because I'm not insane like old Jimbo over there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we can laugh about it now. <laughs> 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 like, that was so funny. We, uh, It's okay. I can laugh about it now. Because that just shows you that. No, this is never funny. You ruined my life. And it's just, it's not funny 20 years ago or today, honey. Well, buddy, thanks for stopping by. Uh, listen, next time you want to mutilate some part of your body, just swing on by and show it to us. I'm going. I, I just wondered if you knew what it was like to go through your whole life with a tattoo of Peggy on your arm. I, I had to marry a girl named Peggy. A fat horse of a Peggy. You know, the kind of woman that looks like she inhaled another woman. <laughs> Now, I guess we should all be grateful for what we have, you know? I mean, you got a Peggy that's beautiful and fun. I got one that sleeps standing up. I can laugh about that now, though. <laughs> hey, boy, we had fun in high school, didn't we? Like the time I took you to that fancy restaurant and I put the roach in the food, we got our meal for free. <laughs> That's funny. My daughter is dating a guy who did that. I know. It's my son. <laughs> I can laugh about that now, too. And the mm-hmm. look... Talk about amazing acting. They just dropped the whole joke, even though you just got done with one of the funniest sequences ever. The yeah. way Peg and Al look at each other, it looked like our daughter has just been kidnapped and this is serious and she could be getting killed right now. You know, (laughs) I don't think we give enough credit to uh, sitcoms when it comes to acting because you had like, I've been watching the Goldbergs and like the acting in that show is phenomenal. And I'm just like, we don't give any credit to this style of acting of having to actually pull off that they're a family that, that right after something super funny happens, they have to turn around and do a, a 180 and be freaked out or sad or something like that. Right. Yeah. Where's Kelly? I don't know. But I think she might be out with Brian. Oh, that's great. My daughter's out with a spawn of Norman Bates and Seabiscuit. <laughs> I should have killed him when he drank my juice. Maybe we better go find her. <laughs> Did you guys, as horror fans, you like the reference of he's the spawn of Norman Bates and Seabiscuit? Oh yeah. my god, that was so good. <laughs> Unfortunately, now every time someone says Norman Bates, I think of this guy named Alex Edwards. So it's like this weird, like, they're associated in my brain now. Good, good. Well, everybody <laughs> knows that I'm the true psycho out of this whole circle of friends we have, just so you know. So that's when that's when fans start resembling their movies. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> you, you and Dan are going to pull a scream here soon. <laughs> you won't believe what else is we got. That's not it. Dad, I got a good one. This one is so good, I won't even charge you. And guess where I saw Kelly? Eliminate the obvious, like the backseat, the bushes, the jail. <laughs> now guess. Okay, time's up. She's getting a tattoo. Uh-oh. Yep. I saw her and Brian going to the tattoo parlor. They were testing her arm. Should I bring down your belt? <laughs> Al, you gotta do something. Ooh, much better than a belt, Dad. I'm gonna go stop Kelly, then I'm gonna find Jimbo and hit one out of the park. Now, where's this tattoo parlor? Okay, it's the one next to the nightclub that says, girls, girls, girls. You go down... I know where it is. <laughs> oh, also his joke when he's like, Guess where I saw Kelly? Now, eliminate the obvious, the backseat, the bushes, the jail. I like how the parents were willing to put up with this. Like, he said that, and they were sitting there waiting for him to go through. Like, what do you say? Bud, stop. This is important. Where is she? <laughs> they're that waiting because I love that scene. Like, <laughs> Bud is a savage. <laughs> they're, they're waiting because Bud said he wouldn't charge for this one. Because we have seen him charge to give information, if you'll remember the Cobra situation. Oh, yeah. Cobra. With a sword in his mouth. Yeah. <laughs> Should so, I bring down your belt? Apparently, Brian told Kelly, another, this guy really is dumb and does not know when to shut up. Brian told Kelly the whole story of Jimmy and her mom and how, you know, she left on the back of a Harley after 
the the dad came back with the tattoo and how everything happened. Why would Jimmy tell Kelly that? Yeah, because I'm like, if you, if if you tell me that one of your parents used to bang one of my parents, hold on, wait a minute. I don't know that I want to be a part of it. What what did he say again? Say that again. She said, "Yeah, Jimmy told me the whole story on the way to the the parlor." Because even at the end, even if you think that we're misconstruing this or whatever, it's 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 a fact because at the end, Kelly goes, now both these idiots have tattoos of our names on them. So yeah. she knows that this other guy has it. So Brian told her the whole story. Like, if your dad, like, this was a revenge plot. Like, number one, what kind of dad even goes to her kid says, you see that smoking hot chick over there? I want you to start dating her. And you're going to get her to get your tattoo, tattoo your name on her. Like what this whole revenge plot is bizarre. Oh my God. I just realized that's what the missing thing that Kelly doesn't know about. That's why she liked him so much. Why she liked such a goody good because he was doing something bad. She just didn't know about it. She has like, <laughs> she has like bad dar, like yeah. gay dar. She, she has saw bad dar. through it and, <laughs> subconsciously. And, yes. That's what it is. Oh my God. That explains so much about this episode. Yeah, it's it's uh, crazy. Uh, and then Al, you know, what going did you say to, about a Harley? Uh, Peg drove off on the back of another guy's Harley while Jimmy pulled up. Was that was? Do you think that was that wasn't Al? Was it? It was some other dude. No, that was some other dude for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. Uh, so Al goes to break Jimmy's bones with a bat and Brian's if he finds him. Oh, Mom, I didn't get the tattoo. I mean, I was going to, but on the way over, Brian told me the whole story, and a funny thing happened. We really did fall in love, and we both decided to get tattooed. But then you realized how upset your father and I would be. No. (laughs) See, when Brian was getting his tattoo, I saw the cutest guy, and we fell in love. So I went outside, and we rode off in the sunset in his Domino's pizza truck. This is it, Mom. This is the real thing. Oh, you're really turning into a fine young woman. You know, Mom, I feel closer to you than ever. Now that both of these geeks have tattoos. <laughs> yeah. You know, I feel kind of sorry for Brian, though. He's going to have to go through his whole life with Kelly tattooed on his arm. That's no problem. I'll just introduce him to this other girl at school named Kelly. She's kind of fat, though. <laughs> As long as we're happy. <laughs> Kelly, my hair. <laughs> so he goes to the tattoo parlor. They weren't there. So he goes to Jimmy's house. And she came out of the kitchen. <laughs> I went to the tattoo parlor. Good news. She didn't get the tattoo. I know. She's upstairs. Did you find Jim? Yep. I followed Brian to his house. Broke the door down. And I was going to break Jimmy's head when... She came out of the kitchen. Peg, her face was in a jello mold. She was wearing a muumuu, but it had to be slit so she could fit into it. And Peg, she had no knees. So I let him live. I figured that's the worst thing I could do to him. He brings it to life, man. I've never had such an imagination as I do when I listen to him describe these people. You yeah. can almost see them, and seeing them wouldn't be enough. It was almost, like I said, disappointing to look at Peg's mother under the covers in that episode where the street light and all that, uh, I forgot the name of it. Oh, For Whom the Bell Tolls. Yeah. Like, it was disappointing to even see a silhouette of her or anything, because nothing compares to the imagination. Yeah. Now, I have a question for you. At the end of this episode, the last line is Al telling Peggy she looks great. Do you think that they had sex that night? Ooh, can't give points for for circumstantial evidence, buddy. Oh, no speculation here? Okay, okay. Uh, I would say yeah, maybe. Uh, No, I think you're right. There's no 100% proof, so we shouldn't do it. But how funny was it that Kelly, when she ditched Brian, it was to jump into a dude's Domino's truck? (laughs) <laughs> wow you know what i ate domino's pizza today me too i ordered papa john's pizza today because i like myself i well, ate domino's today as well 
How do you eat Domino's greasy? I and get fifty percent off. Do you know? Oh, you know why I did? Because uh, we ordered it yesterday, and it was a holiday. I won't tell you which one because the show's recorded a little early. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take you out of the moment because it's live. We're live in the nudie bar. And uh, all the pizza places were closed, so they were the only ones open. And we would never, ever order, like, Papa John's or Domino's. I don't get chain pizza. I get real pizza from a pizza parlor. But we were in a pinch. We had people coming over, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. How funny, also, how, before was it that Bud was taking her dresser out of the room and going down the stairs? Classic. Even when she showed up and she was like, who ratted me out? And then right after that, you see Bud throwing her clothes over the uh, banister. <laughs> and by the way, guys, I think I believe this is the first episode where you see the address of the Bundy residence. You know, you, you don't know the, the house number of the Bundys at all, I believe, until this episode when Kelly and Brian go outside to talk about the tattoo. And we discover it's 9764, and in a future episode, I believe we find out it's Jeopardy Lane. But yeah, so this is like a milestone. This is the first time you uh, find out the house number of the Bundys. Alright, we'll be right back with our ratings. Take it away, Jamie. No Ma'am will be right back to wrap up this week's review. Be sure to join their Facebook group page for all the podcast news and updates. Just type in www.facebook.com slash groups slash Married with Children podcast. Be sure to subscribe to them on iTunes and please leave a review telling them what you think of the show. To subscribe to their YouTube channel, just go to channels and search up Married with Children podcast. You can email them at marriedwchildrenpodcast.com at gmail.com thanks for checking out this review now the guys are going to give their final thoughts and ratings of this week's episode all right guys it's rating time how many roaches are we putting in the food out of five for how do you spell revenge justin hmm well uh this episode much like last week's episode uh, I really enjoyed. I thought it had great jokes, a um, lot of action from from all the family members having good lines. Uh, Bud kills it this episode, and I really, really liked to see this father daughter dynamic between Al and Kelly that we haven't seen too much so far. And there's a lot of actual like there's multiple touching moments in this episode, and uh, it's cool to see. It's cool to see that, but then it's also cool to see how they, uh, <laughs> you know, how Al was like, I didn't want to talk to Kelly, but I had to or something, you know yeah. what I mean? Like right after, because it keeps you, it reminds you that you're still watching yeah. uh, Married with Children. Um, man, I, I really liked this episode. I really did. I, I think that I think that these two weeks in a row were really strong episodes. I'm, I'm going to come in. Same spot I did last week with last week's episode, the Razor's Edge episode. I'm, I'm going to give this episode a uh, four and a half roaches in the food. Wow. Half roach, which is even more disgusting. <laughs> yeah, half a roach. That's pretty weird. <laughs> I was going to say, did you just happen to have half a roach or you specifically nope. like cut a roach in half cut right there on half. the table? Wow. Cut in half. Amazing. Wow. Uh, waiter, there are four and a half roaches in my food. <laughs> I'm not paying for this. It's a strip club. No one cares. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is the the jiggly room, dude. So I mean, I think they're still gonna make you pay for it. That's just my opinion. Yep. All right, uh, Jerry. How many roaches out of five are you putting in your food for? How do you spell revenge? Um, it was a really cool episode. At first, I actually had ra- I, I changed my rating during this episode. Um, mm-hmm. Originally, I had it at as a, as a three out of five. But I think it's because the previous episode was so amazing to me that this one coming right after it, you know, it's like going right after a great act. Oh, don't let that fool you. Yeah. So but as we talked about it, I kind of realized that there was a lot more going on. And I think originally I was also like kind of sad that the baseball side of it got thrown away because I really wanted to see them play a game of baseball because I think it would be (laughs) hilarious. Yeah. 
So it, but but then I was like, but it's really cool that they did give us that twist that it actually all ended up being about Kelly. So I ended up boosting it to four out of five roaches uh, based off this review. Wow, nice. Four out of five. Uh, yeah. How do you spell revenge? Has always been a personal favorite of mine. One of the things I liked about it is that it was so... It was like one of those low-key great episodes. Like, something that you could... You know, you could mention a lot of Married with Children episodes to people who are fans. And a lot of them uh, will... You know, you could state obvious ones and they'll all know what you're talking about. But... I always feel like this is one of the ones that is just my little niche that I, for some reason, loved. I mean, I would just watch this episode out of the whole disc sometimes, just because it's just so great. It has everything I want in A Marrow Children. Uh, it's just perfect. I mean, there's really nothing to say that I didn't say for the last, you know, almost hour or whatever. But it's just, to me, this is like the perfect Marrow Children episode. This is, it fulfills you on every level. All the strong jokes, the interaction with Kelly or Dad, with the, the the Peg stuff and Bud and everything, and and the the crazy characters that come in, like Brian and the interaction with Al and the family when they came back, and then the Dad is just the topper, and then the description of his wife at the end. I mean, it just doesn't get better. It is just perfect. Like, to me, there's nothing I would want any anything to change in this episode. So, it's a 5 out of 5 to me. This is, like, this is the the greatness of Married with Children to me. Awesome. Yeah, love it. I think it's pretty interesting that I rated the last episode a 5 out of 5, and then you rated this episode a 5 out of 5. You do realize Steve wasn't in this episode, right? <laughs> wow. Guess what? We're halfway through Season 2. Oh, my God. Yep. Oh yeah, we're almost by by next recording. We'll have done two season ones essentially. Wow! All right, guys. You know, reviewing this episode and all the baseball talk about how I think I'd be into it. I think I think I just want to go for it, and I definitely want to get. I'm together. down. Yeah, you guys. I want. I might. Well, never. Oh, I, I. We can't really lose to. Troy's though, because we are going to be playing for the Jiggly Room. So Jerry, I don't think we want you on our team. But I made a bet with him that if we lose, that Justin would go over to stripping with them again. I ain't going back. Uh-huh.